the paper so we can continue to talk about these recommendations in various fora, the closest one being the Eastern Partnership Summit that will be taking place in Riga in May. So first of all, our goal is to change the tone of discussion. We would like to place the media issues in a security framework. In our opinion, it is no longer enough to speak only of democracy, media freedom, and values. We have to recognize that these issues now have become security concerns for our democracies. At the same time, we as democracies are obliged to search for responses that are not only effective, but democratically sound. So it is for us inappropriate to respond in a similar way as the threat is coming in. So security and democracy, a security threat and a democratic response. First of all, what is the threat? Information has now become a weapon. Russia is promoting a narrative that is aimed at disinforming dividing and fomenting unrest in societies outside of its own borders. This hybrid warfare uses both military and non-military actions to achieve military aims. Information channels, whether they're television, social media, or others, they become active agents of influence. This Kremlin narrative has created a concept of Russian world, Ruskimir. And this world is inhabited by Russian compatriots abroad, who have supposedly been separated by artificial borders and who yearn to be united. This is a concept that can be perceived by target populations as inclusive and safe and thus attractive. The national narratives in our own countries are not always so inclusive and the messages contained in the policy actions domestically are not always perceived as welcoming by these same populations. This Ruskimir concept has evolved over the last decades and it has intensified with the prospect of a Ukrainian shift towards Europe. And as we can currently see in Ukraine, the Russian narrative includes a rewriting of history, creating the concept of Novorossiya. It includes systemic disinformation, sowing discontent in populations, turning discontent into internal conflict, which can then be fueled from abroad. The compromised nature of the information space in the countries surrounding Russia enables this Russian narrative to dominate in segments of the population. The aim of these Kremlin policies is to stop Euro-Atlantic integration of Georgia, Ukraine, and Moldova, and to turn the Baltic states into the weakest link of the European Union and NATO. And this is why we argue particularly for reframing our national policy debates. We cannot afford to consider strengthening democratic media as a soft issue, an issue only of democratic values, an issue to take up when we have the time, the luxury, and the financial resources. In our opinion, our media environments are now directly related to our national security, and this recognition should underpin policy decisions, including decisions on financial priorities in the region. The media environments of the Baltic and Black Sea countries do have commonalities and also differences. We have substantial Russian-speaking populations, and we have substantial parts of the populations who are consumers of Russian state-controlled media. The domination of these media in public information space combined with few Russian-language alternative voices, creates a fertile ground for the penetration and acceptance of a Russian narrative. Russian television is the most influential and widely used mainstream media in Russia, and it is widely consumed abroad. The Russian state has consolidated control over its media through control of advertising budgets, ownership, elimination of editorial independence, influencing of personnel decisions, and execution of narrative control. Only an illusion of media freedom remains in Russia, with a small number of minor independent media outlets. 
rebroadcasting brings this content controlled media into neighboring countries. Also, the growth of the TV channel Russia Today and the news agency Sputnik expands this media presence beyond Russia's borders, even beyond the countries of our region. Each of our countries also has a weak media environment. Across the region, public broadcasting is underfunded. It cannot achieve the type of market share to compete in Russian language communities. In the Baltic states, national policy for many years has been investment in national language broadcasting, allowing only minimal support to Russian language programming. Georgia has had the experience of countering Russian media influence with publicly funded peak TV. But this experiment halted in 2012. In Ukraine and Georgia, private media dominate, but many media outlets are beholden to oligarchs, they're non-transparent, and crippled by a long history of financial obfuscation and tax avoidance. In the Baltic, private media face the dual challenges of small markets and an upheaval of traditional funding models being experienced by media globally. There's also a lack of transparency of ownership in the private media. Public information space has in some cases, including in Latvia, dissolved into separate communities, defined as much by the language of the media as by the worldview propagated in this media, leaving little common space for a collective national conversation. In this environment, the media struggles to fulfill functions as it should in a democratic society. Financial constraints, along with a lack of transparency and ownership, negatively affect the professional standards of journalism, making it difficult to engage in investigative work and to preserve editorial independence and integrity in the face of financial pressures aimed at influencing the content. The internet and social media represent an opportunity to counter Russia's media offensive. The internet can create communities of Russian speakers searching for information based on professional journalistic standards. It is cost effective to reach out to broad audiences. Strong examples of internet media can be found across the region, and new internet media are setting up in countries outside of Russia trying to reach the Russian public. But the internet is also a battle arena, not just an opportunity. With no borders, no licensing, no purchase of airtime, no printing equipment needed, few regulatory standards, it is easy for Russian information influence to extend through the internet. The Russian narrative is magnified by anonymous commentators or internet trolls. This trolling is a challenge, not only for Russian language media outlets, in the Baltic and Black Sea regions, but also for media outlets across Europe and North America, regardless of language. Participation of trolls in the common public conversation creates distortions, reducing the quality and the legitimacy of the national conversations. Because the internet is so free and open, policing it with the aim of limiting this freedom of expression is challenging. And it is, in fact, a challenge that should not be taken up by democratic governments. In our recommendations, however, we will be talking about things that can be done, if not by governments, then by others. Given the environment that I have sketched out, the Baltic to Black Sea Alliance offers a set of recommendations. A proposal for actions for national governments, regional bodies, including the European Union, and proposals for media for themselves. The countries of the region must have, or should create, a public information space that includes Russian-speaking citizens. The broadcasting presence needs to be of a high professional standard. It must conform to the media consumption habits of the audience, and it must be grounded in European values. If it is to be successful, this TV presence requires resources, and these are resources of the magnitude not available to each country. 
regional cooperation is necessary for success in this type of endeavor. In this conversation, often one asks, can we even begin to compete? Financially, probably not. Not even with maximum cooperation by everyone involved. It is doubtful that we will match dollar for dollar or ruble for ruble the investment. However, it is still important to have an alternative narrative in Russia, to have an alternative media presence, so that those media consumers in each country who prefer to consume media in the Russian language, so they have options. It is possible to compete on quality and to provide content grounded in a democratic worldview. The prerequisites to success include conforming to the viewing habits of the audience. For example, audience preferences for a single broadcaster providing a full range of programming. News, public affairs, sports, and entertainment. Success also needs to include a modern approach, a fully integrated internet platform, if we hope to reach out to younger people who have rapidly changing media consumption habits. In our definition of success, the content must be of a European worldview, sourced and funded by European partners as their contribution to security of Europe. Next, we also feel that alternative voices in Russia itself should be supported and promoted. The oppressive nature of the media environment in Russia has silenced very many journalists. Their efforts to set up new enterprises outside the reach of Russian state control should be facilitated wherever possible. National governments of the region should be encouraged to adopt policies aimed at creating an enabling environment for these new journalistic voices. And we should be creating opportunities for these voices to be heard in our own countries, not only in their target of Russia. Transparency of media ownership. A strong media environment does require transparency and accountability. One cannot even evaluate conflicts of interest or identify excessive media concentrations or abuses of media power without the ability to identify media owners. The countries of our region should take steps to implement a robust transparency regime domestically requiring public disclosure of media ownership down to the ultimate owners, traced back to the natural persons. These reporting and disclosure requirements need to be subject to a strong oversight body. They should also be harmonized across the region and across Europe, so that information collection will produce a Europe-wide picture of media ownership and a penetration of media space. This is important not only for our region, but for Europe as a whole, targeting, in fact, not only Russian influence, but other issues of media concentration and influence in Europe. There are things that need to be done, but that cannot be done by governments. This is part of the democratic response to these threats. The media themselves need homework. They need self-regulation to strengthen the media environment. Journalistic standards, fair, accurate, objective, they're the goals that we set for professional journalism. However, the media offerings in all of our countries are full of reporting that is neither fair, nor accurate, nor objective. These are issues for the journalistic community itself how the journalists uphold their standards in a way that builds their relationship, that builds trust with the audience. Another example is strategies to reduce the impact of Russian internet trolling. Limiting freedom of expression on the internet cannot and should not be done by the governments. Media owners, however, should have an interest in preserving the quality and legitimacy of public comment and discussion taking place on their websites. A regional conversation should be encouraged among the media, 
media analysts, and human rights advocates on strategies for reducing the impact of trolling. These are strategies to be taken on by the owners and editors of internet media sites. There is, however, more that can and should be done by Europe. We advocate for creating a fund for professional journalism. This type of fund could support those countries within Europe and the Eastern Partnership that are vulnerable to Russian information influence. A strong professional media, not counter-propaganda, is the best response to Russian media influence. But the financial base required for a strong democratic media is crumbling and has been crumbling for quite some time. This has resulted in the weakening of the media, in lower professional standards, and diminished audience reach and engagement. Arm's length project-based funding should be made available to support the ability of media outlets to meet high professional standards, to support activities such as training, investigative reporting, watchdog activities, improving audience reach, and media efforts to create new revenue models sustainable in the future. A regional European funding mechanism would be much preferable to national mechanisms. Regional mechanisms would not suffer as many credibility risks and would be much less at risk for politicization. Regional funding mechanisms could and should also support NGOs that are engaged in media analysis and media literacy promotion, including educational programs in schools. NGOs do have a meaningful role to play in exposing misinformation, in raising media literacy, in monitoring the journalistic standards, and providing analysis of the media landscape. European grant making should target these efforts for support, both within the European Union and in the partnership countries. More can be done in the countries of the region to strengthen the media environment by pursuing regulatory remedies. Broadcasting regulation and licensing in Europe presumes freedom of expression and they are designed to uphold professional standards such as impartiality. The weaponization of information by Russia exploits this freedom of expression and ignores these professional standards. A European conversation on appropriate regulatory responses should be conducted with the aim of outlining a set of recommendations for the regulatory bodies of the region. The recommendations should generate consensus among the regulators and they should achieve a balance between control and sanctions for violations of journalistic standards, and they should respect the duty to uphold freedom of expression. We see a much closer cooperation for regulators would be needed to provide the oversight and response in these issues, and also to provide oversight and response in those cases where media outlets from Russia are registered in one European country but broadcast to another, thus effectively circumventing the regulations in place today. Since the collapse of the Soviet Union, Europe has lost its depth of knowledge on Russia. We feel that this depth of knowledge needs to be re rebuilt. The EU and the national governments should increase support to think tanks, research, academic institutions, to rebuild the capacity to understand developments in Russia's policy, including the monitoring of the information space, the monitoring of the weaponization of information and its manifestations across the region. Much of the analytical capacity remaining resides in our region. Yet, the policy centers and academicians remain outside the European mainstream conversation, and they need to be brought in to the mainstream conversation about Europe's security challenges and strengthen and support it. Lastly, the Baltic and Black Sea countries need to take a closer look at how the governments are building our own national narratives. Strategic communication capabilities of our governments need to be strengthened. The Baltic states 
can take advantage of efforts underway within NATO, and European support to Georgia, Moldova, and Ukraine should include capacity building for strategic communication. There are many democratic responses to the weaponization of information. We've outlined some of the responses we feel could be useful in strengthening our media environments and reducing the impact of Russia's weaponization of information. A strong democratic media is not an outcome of democracy. It's not a luxury for a time of peace. It is now a national security concern and a precondition to securing our democracies. We welcome the chance to bring this conversation to Tbilisi today. And we hope that input from today's conversations and exchanges will further inform these recommendations. In April, as we conduct these conversations in Riga, Kiev, Tbilisi, and Kishinev, we will be listening, revising these recommendations, adding on from your input, and we will be submitting them for further discussion during the Eastern Partnership Summit in Riga in May. I look forward to the exchanges to come and to your questions and comments. Thank you. Uh, would you like to comment now or should we listen to Mr. Dimas? What is your suggestion? Okay, so uh, now <coughs> Mr. Dimas, so it would be nice to listen to your experience, what, what kind of form uh, Russian propaganda or weaponization exists, in which kind of form in Latvia, and what is the experience and what is the answer to this problem? So, good morning. Uh, I will speak uh, more from the position of, uh, of me as uh, chairman of um, National Electronic Mass Media Council of Latvia. I'm elected to this uh, council more than uh, three years ago. This is an uh, independent uh, regulatory authority for audiovisual media services on the national level in Latvia. And uh, I will speak uh, about three points. So mainly we are speaking uh, about uh, two sides of the same medal, uh, namely uh, about the strengthening of our national information space on one side of this medal, and about the defense of our national, national information space on other side. But I would say about uh, three points, uh, namely the first is strengthening of public service media, uh, which we see as a cent central point on this side uh, of, of strengthening of national uh, information space as a very central issue. Uh, the second is how to diversify, diversify the media landscape in Latvia, especially on the field of electronic media and especially on the field of television in Russian language. And this is also mostly about the public service uh, media uh, organizations and uh, development of uh, public service media in Latvia about uh, new Russian language channel of Latvian public service television in Russian language, yeah. And uh, the third point is already mentioned defense of, uh, of uh, uh, national uh, information space, uh, especially on the field of uh, electronic uh, mass media, namely television, traditional electronic mass media, electronic mass media, television and radio. So, first of all, we started uh, already 2012 um, uh, after the financial crisis uh, in Latvia, which was a very, very, very difficult time also for public service media, for media, all media in the country because of uh, loss of uh, advertising money, uh, loss of uh, also money from uh, taxpayers 
when we are speaking about uh, public service media organizations, namely uh, Latvian television and Latvian radio. But since 2012, we increased uh, significantly, we increased the financing for both public service media organizations and especially also for the fourth uh, program of Latvian radio, which is mainly in Russian language, which is uh, 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 broadcasting already since uh, the establishing of independence all this time in Russian language and has also some programs in languages of other minorities. Uh, in, in Polish, in Ukrainian, etc., but mainly in Russian language. So the, the task was to strengthen this alternative voice uh, on the field of uh, radio, uh, because of course we have we have also uh, some radio stations which are retransmitting some contents from Goas Russia, etc. But this, uh, this uh, letter radio 4 is, uh, we can say, a success story because it is number one according in the country, according to the ratings, according to the share. Uh, letter radio 4 in Russian language is uh, the most successful also among of commercial uh, radio stations in, in, in Russian language. So it, it means it is a good example we can do uh, we can establish a uh, uh, program channel which is competitive uh, and mainly uh, the, the, the competition advantage is of course the local content. The local content which is not provided by, 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 by uh, uh, Russian, Russian uh, stations, Russian channels. So there we had problems um, um, about the structure, about the financing of public uh, service medium uh, and we made proposals for the government uh, about financial reform, about the reform of, uh, of the supervision because uh, in our days our council is not only a regulatory authority for all electronic media but also fulfills the function of council for both public service media. So we are representing ownership and we are elaborating public service remit each year for, uh, for both um, electronic uh, uh, public service media and our proposal was and is to have two councils, one separate regulatory authority uh, and one separate uh, and public council for public uh, service media. So this proposal is still not accepted by the government. So we are discussing this. The other issue, as I already mentioned, was financing. We uh, uh, increased the financing, uh, but still not enough. And there is a problem that um, we, are have, we have direct financing from the state, state budget for our public service media. There is no fee or no special tax. There is no financial independence for our public service, service media. So our proposal is to have special tax or, or to have, uh, how we can say, uh, part of already existing taxes which are earmarked for this, uh, uh, for this uh, um, purpose, namely only for financing of public service media. This is also still in discussion, not accepted by the government. So, and the third point in this reform is to unify and to, to, to establish strong common internet platform of both public service media organizations, because we have, as I already mentioned, two of them. Latvian television and Latvian radio are still two legal persons and they of course are artificial, 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 artificial barriers for cooperation, for collaboration and our proposal is to have one legal person and to, 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 to develop common internet platform 
Uh, we started this uh, since 2012. We have common internet platform. We have, we have common internet uh, portal, news portal of both public service media organizations in three languages, Latvian, Russian and English. And this Russian language part is also very important because this is practically the same content we, what we have for uh, also added content, what we have uh, in television, what we have in radio, but this is, uh, 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 how we can say, uh, specially produced for internet platform at the same time, and it is very important especially for younger audiences because they are not watching linear television, uh, they are not watching always uh, 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 radio on the waves, so to say, uh, from the frequencies, but they can uh, reach this content uh, via this internet platform, uh, which is, as I mentioned, common portal, uh, and includes also archives of uh, programs of both media uh, organizations, not only news, uh, news portal. So different programs, also entertainment and etc., which are uh, original programs, are available uh, from this platform. This is already started, but the decision about the one radio person is still not accepted uh, by the government. So then to the second point uh, about um, the diversification and creating practically the creation of uh, alternative alternatives. Uh, uh, how we can say uh, they must be also uh, they must be uh, interesting uh, information and informational alternatives for uh, uh, Russian speakers in Latvia. We are thinking that this is our uh, homework uh, to achieve uh, these audiences. And uh, traditionally, the public service media must, uh, must uh, respond to the needs uh, also of minority groups. So, when this minority group is relatively big, uh, we have 35%, we can say, this linguistic minority. They are not all uh, ethnic Russians, uh, they are also partly Ukrainians, Belarusians, uh, Poles, etc. But uh, they are, uh, the mother language is Russian and they are speaking in families Russian. Uh, there is of course good result during the uh, second time of independence. Practically 90% of all, uh, uh, of all uh, minorities are saying we are understanding the uh, Latvian language. And uh, this is especially not a problem for uh, younger people. But one thing is to know language. And the other, other thing is uh, uh, using of media, especially of television, which is mainly uh, uh, entertainment uh, uh, medium. So, and they prefer to use the television, of course, in, in native language. So, and on this field, we don't have our proposal until now. So, uh, we, we had special, uh, special um, research. Uh, uh, project at the end of last year, in November, in November uh, there, there was a public poll and also, uh, also focus groups, many focus groups in biggest uh, towns of Latvia among the Russian speakers. What are the needs? What are their needs regarding uh, consumption, regarding using of uh, television? And uh, what was the most interesting result of this? That uh, more than 75% uh, percent of these people are saying that they are receiving news from TV, not from radio, not from newspapers, not from magazines, not from internet even, but from television. And in practice, it means from Russian televisions, because there is no, 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 no our uh, program. So, and this is because we want to create. Uh, like it was already uh, decided in Estonia, uh, uh, they will start in this autumn already, the uh, special Russian language channel of public service media, so, which will be sustainable, which will work not as uh, content propaganda, but as communication platform uh, made by Russians, 
Latvian Russians uh, and for Latvian Russians, for people who are mainly oriented to, to stay, to live in Latvia, uh, to the values, etc. Um, uh, of Latvia and uh, of Europe. Because what we see also um, by this need uh, is more, uh, more, uh, more, uh, 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 so more, more uh, radical, or how we can say, uh, more expressed uh, in, in uh, this, ta this, this times. This is especially after the Russian aggression uh, uh, against Ukraine. Uh, we see some polarization in, in the uh, Russian-speaking uh, population. Uh, and there are practically three groups. Uh, one is, of course, uh, people which are uh, identifying, identifying himself with Mr. Putin and his regime and very strong oriented to Russia. Uh, but uh, there is also a relatively big group uh, of people, uh, uh, at least one third of all, uh, Russian-speaking uh, population which, which are very strong oriented to Latvia and Europe, and there is the same group between, so undecided group, so to say. And uh, we must work, of course, especially with this second group and with the third group. And the problem is, they don't have media outlets for, for uh, their interests, especially on the field uh, of, of television. Of course, this is an uh, issue of money, and this is because very important are uh, different initiatives, especially from uh, uh, European Endowment for Democracy, because uh, this can be created then also by the money, with the money uh, from other uh, countries, especially from European Union, Germany, uh, Nordic countries. Uh, even the United States, probably, etc. So, of course, we must do our homework and we must invest also our taxpayers' money. Uh, but this is also, of course, big discussion, discussion also in Latvia about this uh, third channel of uh, uh, Latvian television. Uh, we will see, there is no decision until now. Uh, but we have always, also, as I mentioned about the uh, second program of Latvian Radio, we have always seen the news in Russian in the second channel, all this time after the uh, establishing of independence. And also one, one program was discussion, like talk show, about political issues. But this is in the second channel, which is mainly dominated the many Latvian language channels, so, and this is practically this, this Russian language part, which we enlarged since November last year. This was also one response uh, to this um, Russian propaganda, uh, and th th there we received support uh, from the government, from the state budget. Uh, we enlarged with um, five new programs, which are already relatively uh, popular also among the Russian speaking audience within this second channel of Latvian television. But we as Council see this as, uh, this as a pilot project uh, for the third channel because, especially when we are speaking regarding uh, uh, linear television, the people are watching channels, they are not watching special programs at special times. So. So when we want to reach this audience, the content must be local, but the content must be also attractive. They must be also part of entertainment in this channel. This will be not a news channel only. So the idea is to create, a, uh, how to say, um, a major channel, we can say probably, which means different contents. Uh, and uh, which responds to different needs. According to Dennis McVeigh, as you know probably, uh, there are four of them, mainly. Information is only one, when we are speaking. So the other is self-identification, very important in this situation, when we are speaking about Latvian Russians, Russian speakers, so to say. The, the third is social interaction. This is because we are speaking about communication platform not about content propaganda and the force is of course uh, uh, entertainment entertainment yeah entertainment so and uh, all of these four parts uh, are planned uh, there is a concept elaborated by Latvian television 
and we made approximately three millions uh, of euro uh, for the first year, uh, year for the start of this um, this uh, this this uh, channel. But we already are investing one million a year in the programs which we already have in the Russian language in in in, in the second uh, channel. So. Then, yeah, and as I mentioned, uh, this is very connected also to the internet platform because all this content is then. Guy Pasta, that. Pasta, that. It's. Uh, uh, yeah, revised. Uh, used also in, in the internet platform. So, uh, there is, a, for example, radio program or talk show in television, and then there is article in the news portal also, uh, and there is video, <coughs> etc. Uh, so, and this is uh, very close. We are not speaking uh, only about the channel, but about uh, this um, uh, complex, uh, complex uh, development of public service uh, media. And the third point, uh, the third point about uh, defense of our uh, national uh, electronic media uh, space, I would say. As you know, there is a uh, uh, European uh, directive uh, about uh, audiovisual media services, which is uh, the main basis for each member state uh, for regulation of electronic media. So this is law. This is law, practically. This must be implemented in the national law. Uh, this is not direct law, so to say, like uh, other regulations, but uh, directives must be implemented. Transport, uh, trans, uh, uh, transported, or how we use Transposed, yeah, uh, into a national law, yeah. So, and we, uh, of course, transpose this, and there, uh, there are uh, some problems. Uh, and um, uh, I can tell you about one concrete example. Um, uh, after the uh, 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 annexation of Crimea, uh, we suspended for three months uh, Channel Russia at uh, uh, And uh, this was, so to say, on the edge of directive, or how we can say, because uh, we, we followed the goal of directive. Uh, the directive says very clear uh, that uh, incitement to hatred uh, is not, uh, not acceptable. And the programs which are including incitement to hatred, this is, so to say, the border of the free speech, uh, must be restricted and this is what we uh, used, this, this goal of directive, but not the procedures, because procedures of this uh, directive, uh, for example, uh, they are uh, uh, speaking about 12 months uh, uh, period when this must be approved, this incitement to hatred, etc. Of course, during war, war times, like five days war, more days war. Uh, uh, in our days, this is not so possible to, to wait uh, 12 months and then to respond to such uh, uh, to such incitement to hate it. But of course, not all member countries are confronted with this um, aggressive propaganda of uh, Russian TV channels in Russian language, and we use this situation uh, to achieve uh, three goals. First of all, we wanted to send clear signals, such such uh, war propaganda, incitement to hatred on, on grounds of nationality, on, on, in concrete case, on, on grounds of Ukrainian nationality. They were, uh, they were um, uh, uh, portrayed as enemies, etc. And of course, uh, also European Union, NATO, and concrete Latvia too, as enemies. And uh, for example, there was uh, uh, a concrete uh, program uh, on 16th of uh, March last year when uh, was mentioned that this was uh, uh, the same where uh, Mr. Kisilov, Mr. Kisilov spoke about the nuclear weapons uh, possibilities to destroy the United States. It's the same, uh, but uh, the same program was about that uh, 
Uh, Nazis, uh, fascistic quanta is already at the power in Kiev and they are going on the streets already to the power in Riga. So, and uh, there was uh, the uh, pictures uh, and the freedom monument, etc. So, uh, this were very concrete uh, examples and there was also each of our decisions uh, can be uh, discussed or can be questioned by the court was not used this possibility. So also from the owners of this program or representatives of this program, it was not used. So we reached this first call, the political signal. Uh, the second was also to, uh, to punish, because these were concrete economic sanctions. They are, uh, they are, uh, uh, they are also taking part uh, in our national advertising market. They are producing nothing, but uh, in Latvia or in European Union, uh, but they are taking part in uh, uh, Latvian advertising markets, e market even with the prices for sausages in supermarkets, etc. So this is targeted advertising for Latvia in this <coughs> Latvia So for three months they don't receive this money. And the third, the third point was of course to raise the attention of our European partners uh, to this issue, and we had also at the end discussion paper from the European Commission, and there is a process which, which started a uh, refit exercise of directive, and there will be changes in, in directive, uh, there will be proposal of changes already next year from the European Commission, there is also such a group of uh, European regulatory authorities where we also are taking part and where we are discussing our proposal. Our proposal is to, uh, to, to, to make easier procedures uh, in, 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 uh, for, for emergency situations, uh, also to make the same regulation more or less for linear and uh, non-linear services, and a specific proposal is also when the third countries program, because we are not speaking here about the European Union programs, but uh, about third countries programs which are registered in London at the uh, uh, UK's regulator, Ofcom, or in uh, Stockholm at Swedish regulatory authority. They are using this possibility of directive. Uh, and, uh, but we are saying when the program is, has, includes uh, 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 targeted advertising from one member country, then this third country's program must be under the jurisdiction of this country. This is our proposal. So, then, when the argumentation is, then we will reach the goals of directive, because there is no effective monitoring in London, no effective monitoring in, in Stockholm regarding these Russian language uh, programs because they even don't see these programs or when they don't understand the language and uh, all monitoring is only on the paper. They are asking Moscow, is there incitement to, uh, to hatred? Moscow is answering no. Procedure is done officially, so this is monitoring. So. Uh, and uh, but also an important point uh, where we have also, uh, also, also understanding more or less that uh, the goal, uh, initial goal of this directive it was, is to strengthen the European audiovisual market. Uh, it was practically against Americans at the beginning, this uh, directive. So, uh, but what we have, uh, we, we have also not uh, effective monitoring about the proportion of so-called European works. Each of these programs must have more than 50% according to directive, more than 50% European works. And uh, Russia is not part of, of um, even of convention about uh, uh, this uh, television without borders. Uh, trans uh, 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 yeah, so they, these are not European works, but there is no effective monitoring about it in London and in Stockholm. And this is also our argumentation, we will have this, when we have these, pro these programs in our jurisdiction and we will punish. Of course, not always the goal is to close. It is also counterproductive, can be counterproductive. But we, we can punish by the money. 
then oh, that's very well will be happy.
Nasmau da mei pikropruis martalia sa sa pot zomar mei misa ne mei rusule no ani arhemi ka sa kete mei am front ispirat ma kana mshe mi doro chwen ko na mshe kana sa pot re buli to gomar e opa akut e khna magram ta pot zer di di riski skwesh ka wart magram <hesitation> mei mbon yaro e sa ti tu isa e pekturi mei mbon yaro e sa ku yane buli a ram den imet split ka bel kine ba isa ti e pekturi mi doro Chwen ka wakai ke tru sula no manar, stunda tsbal ta yashi, wakat si kat sa eto sert si rogor sebo nu si sal terna ti war si rogor sa tigi wong pri webs magram nu, nu sa ti kite wong pro kat si lia webs <hesitation> ta pinan sebo si shek ni si kite wong meori al terna ti war sa nu, e si kina pa e sa ti mut be wi shek ji pri al wat wi si a ki wong pro, a si lia ri kina pa me ma e si pro pi kro pro, <hesitation> chwen wong da shok shok he dut ta zo ga da ta ma ze. <hesitation> tsam ehlo tsue mwa la mwa daga wat nomir tsu wai sari prozesi sara di kawari kata tsu wati lewa sari prozesi du hilis lo desat tsum tel sopli oshi mi minare o tsa kari porme mi sata kata tsu wati lewa tsi ei wata ei sara di tsue lo ei sari amat pi lo ei eta pi lo mwa sa tsi hilat tsu tsu em sau bro tsu tara ke kima mwa sa tsu tsu em war tsa kumi skorshi Magra me ma tsipi kro pro mruse tis <hesitation> rusu le no ma ni ma otsa pro ba te zu ka ta drusu le propaganda, ma to me tis chen shi mo me chen na ro mu ure pte hle chen rusu le propaganda e sa ra ni ma to me tia propaganda e ta chopi a ro amas shi o khe to to ko te li ta wisi ko la por ma stan e ta ta sa ta gi shi mu shi a ba tsu mo khe sa shi sa ba mi sa ti <hesitation> ras ko li smo pa. Albat mugoni aroma, isa ti wisa shi shiro yoba, sukwa kwa tana bisu, tem sopi yoba isu, europ isu isa amari kisa tan shem sopi isu, sula no mani ma utsa kwa loba, ro kur sukwa tam shwa ni kwa tana bisu isa amito, <hesitation> strategia, tagada sukwa ti leba onda i kos <hesitation> ase be, e kasa ke bero piro ni tapi isu isa amkwa kana bisu isa mere e ti di di laba tsa, sa e to strategia, armi tsi amas kasa ke bato ma mbok tu aroma kana. Kuna vi pikro to che mi azli to to ta ni kos kamo ait ke mari kuli ne bos ta kamo ait ke ta che mi pisca sa interesua <hesitation> mi ma che avis ka sa ke bero mara ni temo grati uli ta kamo hatu ista avis ukla vi sukla vas vatslat ma gram che ma ka ta dru so shi konda di di she hodra sa ta tsu pikro vdi ta ta dru gur mo vi pikro to isa ti he he bi rom ma ait temo grati uli ka no ne pita war huyot. Magram <hesitation> rangat smisa se bis onit, imiti roma isa risi tulubili se ina hobo homo popia, kwa kana bis ina hunda kapirda bir mi martuli <hesitation> agresia, am sa informatsio sa shole pebit, rani menaidat mohte sa mati kamor tuat spara lelurat, imar hebe so mis kamor tuat chetil ma tuat pirwala, ngul pikrop tamas, abus perspektiwa tuara. Ini toro makan tuat, mesti awak kira kira, mesti jurnal sih kamu pernah nabi. Stadi ya, mesti so Amerika Syarikat sih dalam Kongres dan Komite di situ masih profesor atau am tema sih. Saya baru saja sampai di sini, so tuh dat Kirmania sih, kira macam tuh sulit nama ni musa keluar. Ini kalau mesti sampai persen ti, hari jadi sahaja nih informasi sih Ukraina sih sahaja. Tapi sih Rusia propaganda. Chou na priu isa tukwa kana pshit sa ta sa wutiwa rupi sukwa kana pshit sa lia na kutuwa luria ta za lia nzi lia lia ta za lia nzi tukwa wuli na sa akta na na mukwa na pshit sa wisku sa kliwa wuwa sa tsi. I think you are very correct to observe that the influence of the Russian narrative the influence of the Russian narrative extends beyond our country's along the borders of Russia and there is of course a huge financial investment coming in uh, to Russian controlled channels that whose aim is broader than our countries. They operate in many different languages. Sputnik is going I don't know how many, 20 or so, even more languages now. So yes, their aims are very much broader to change the discussion and the public opinion. In these countries, in countries all over, um, all over Europe, not just us. Um, and it is a question: What can one do? I think uh, the 
the impact of the Russian narrative in countries with a strong media environment, with many alternatives, is by definition much, much weaker than it is in countries that have a weak media environment or no alternative voices. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why we believe that the response to Russia needs to be a strong media environment in our own countries. Uh, of course, there's always options, as I last mentioned, of uh, going, let's say, hardline and banning things. But those are steps that, in a democracy, cannot be taken lightly. And I, and I think of Aina's example of how uh, they banned the channel for months. It was also a question of documenting, being able to prove, being ready to go to court about this. It is, uh, those are, I think, uh, very harsh steps that probably are not useful in a day-to-day -day context in most of Europe. Uh, they are, however, useful for creating um, understanding of where the limits are for inciting hatred or for violations of the <coughs> standards and the regulations. Um, I think uh, Europe, beyond just uh, the Russian border, is beginning to understand that these, uh, these threats, the, this um, information war is affecting them too. And the public opinion polls, you can see that there is a disbelief, there's a discreditation of, an attempt to discredit uh, media in general as one way of strengthening the view that, okay, we're talking about Ukraine, but no one is right. Everybody has their own version of propaganda. And that, that I think, is one <coughs> issue for the journalists and the media community themselves to highlight the difference, to make sure their standards of professional journalism are upheld, and to highlight the difference to audiences. What is professional journalism versus uh, the creation of a myth or a not quite true fantasy about what's going on? Can I add? Uh, I would say uh, uh, never is too late uh, before the cemetery, so uh, <laughs> because. <laughs> Uh, of course, we have also in Latvia a uh, special law of what we are doing during the case of war. And, and this law is uh, mentioned that in case, this must be approved by the government that there is case of war against Latvia and then we can close all channels of enemy, so to say. But there must be, from the point of view of this case, this case of war, or how we say, Karsta or Serenian or so this is one thing, but I uh, wanted also to concretize uh, what are the arguments for Russian language channel. Uh, first of all, I already mentioned this, uh, that the public service media must reach all audiences, and when we are not reaching this part of uh, potential target audience, this is weakness of our public service media, so we must reach different also niche audiences, uh, minority groups, and also this this group. So, and the uh, uh, main argument actually is um, when we are speaking about Russian propaganda, th uh, about the information space, that there is a relatively big group of uh, people uh, who are practically living uh, uh, in Latvia, physically, <coughs> but uh, in uh, Russian information space mentally, because they are watching uh, only without alternative. This is the problem. The problem is not that they are watching Russian channels. The problem is that they are watching only Russian channels, and they are, which means, according to Noelle Neumann, Elizabeth Noelle Neumann, there is very high media effect on them. Very high. And we, we see this in all closed societies. Uh, when you don't have informational alternative, the influence, the impact of media is very high. You, uh, you can manipulate, you can lead, you can manage these people. Uh, and we saw this in Ukraine. The result of this management, uh, communication management, so to say. Yeah. And this is the danger. And this is because we are speaking about uh, creation of alternative. So this not means they will only watch 
our letter and television. No, but this will be alternative channel for the people who are mainly using television for for reaching news, as I mentioned. This will be alternative uh, choice, alternative possibility uh, for the babushka who is sitting as a, uh, in, in, in one riga, this uh, uh, new uh, park built in Soviet times, and simply with uh, television, this uh, and, uh, at the uh, TV set, yeah, and uh, she will have this possibility in Lanka region, which is uh, our eastern region, uh, Catholic, the most uh, northern Catholic region in Europe. But there are also 62% uh, of families in which uh, Russian language is family language. And when they are watching um, only these Russian channels, of course they are under under influence of that. I just wanted to make uh, one more comment. Uh, the question in Latvia on these issues is far from resolved. The debate about whether we should invest in this Russian language channel is a very heated debate already because the Latvian policies of the past two decades have been very much focused on strengthening the Latvian language and the Latvian public space. So these are very difficult issues and one of, um, I would say, one of the hopes of having these conversations throughout the Baltic is also to refocus the discussion more on security and less on national identity and that we do have an obligation to talk to all citizens and to create alternatives, even if we cannot compete financially. We can create an alternative for those that we can convince to take a look at the alternative. So I would say it's, it's part of the answer because uh, there is no answer to we will never compete and we will never take market share. We probably won't. But we have an obligation to try and create an alternative, I, I feel. And in Latvian case, there is also good argument from the history, because also during the time of first independence, before Soviet occupation 1940, we had uh, among our citizens 25% uh, were, uh, were uh, from uh, national minorities. 25%. And all they automatically uh, received Latvian uh, citizenship. And at that time, there was a uh, relatively st uh, strong media landscape, also not only in German, in uh, Jewish language, but Polish even, but also in Russian language. Uh, newspaper Daily Savonia was even uh, exported to other countries where the Russians lived, and many journalists from Moscow and Petrograd were working at that time. Uh, for this newspaper. Also, in our days, there is big response from the journalists which are not self-identifying with Mr. Putin and living in Russia or, or already outside. Uh, they are ready to work for our channel. So, uh, it means we can not only cooperate with alternative uh, channels like Tosh, etc., but also with concrete journalists, <coughs> moderators, etc., who are ready to work of course, this will be, as I mentioned, mainly for our local audiences, but uh, when they uh, uh, will develop other, other uh, for example, this European channel, uh, there are possible exchanges, etc., of content, and uh, this can even have impact to the audiences in Russia, like it was uh, before the Second World War.
public service televisions normally. Also, <coughs> with entertainment, BBC is the best example, as you know. Uh, this is not only news, not only news. So this is needed for uh, practically, for the, as, I'm, as, as I'm saying, not strategic communication of government, but strategic communication of the nation, of the democratic nation. So, because we have also our constitution, we have our common concepts. What are our 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 uh, main narratives about our history, uh, our values, etc. And they must be represented by uh, by public service media. They can't be marginalized. And this is a task of media policy, I would say, of an European country to strengthen. First task, task to strengthen this. And the second uh, trait is when we are not dealing uh, anything in public service media on the field of television, I assume the first Baltic channel, which is daughter company of first Russian channel in Baltic countries, from legal point of view, private enterprise, but they have very good agreement with first Russian channel. Practically 99% of the content is coming from uh, from uh, first Russian channel, and there are some local programs. And the trait is, as I see, they when they uh, enlar uh, are enlarging these local programs, and when they are the first, and not we as public service television, that then this fight will be at the end uh, much, uh, much uh, more difficult than today. So this is because I'm saying it is not too late. Because until now, they don't have local contents, practically. They don't have, but they can invest, and there are, there are such plans there, on already, uh, and so we must be first, as Estonians. Uh, so, and the third is a point uh, that, um, uh, uh, that uh, uh, there is a collaboration foreseen between uh, Estonia, Latvia, uh, even Lithuania, because they also have in the second channel some content uh, in Russian language about uh, exchange of contents, about uh, common purchases of films, uh, talk shows, probably uh, of entertainment and other uh, content. So when you buy author's rights, for example, for all Baltic region, this is cheaper or practically the same money when you are buying these rights for, uh, for one country. And the same film you can show in Latvian language and the same film when you have right you can show in Russian language. So uh, there are synergies possible and uh, also between countries, uh, uh, at least on, in, in Baltic region. And as I mentioned, there, uh, there is also support possible from Germany, from Nordic countries. Uh, the German foreign minister was last uh, week uh, in all three Baltic countries and there were very concrete agreements about supporting of public service media, also in, uh, in, in uh, Russian language, but not only in Russian language. Also, as I mentioned, yeah, in Latvian, in Latvian case, uh, not to, to not to be marginalized, uh, but uh, to be first. Absolutely, we have Mizan, 
Konda, Ba Ekla, Rigi Sami, Parallel, Gurat, Hoykema Media Conference, Roman Sasavika, Shima Tepara, Amis Mosam Zade, the conference, the Brussels, she chung up a part of the city, Mazero, Garda, Amisa, Esiko, number one, Shemu Shabu Buliro, Outsilabo, Rusul and Mani, Televisia, Mika, Velas, Pasha, Lebe, Bill, the Shake, I keep the most of the Kremlin's one. I mean, don't know, Chai Shamp, the Kerkha, Russet, Arab, Sifomatium, Sarets, Eva, Russet, Eva, Oms, Informatis in Apotek. There is Gaddas Hafs, the Sans Taus, Sifomatio, Sashon, the Sarah is actually a propaganda, Kanshobu propaganda. Is in Arab open road, are a philosophical discussia Shashedia, the Sauretano, is this Emma Jobia to assist Emma Jobia. Akari Laparakiro Matis, I informed you propaganda, Governor of Simashiro, Congress of Nepshi, Kanans Ops, Adamia Neps, Sakutari, Tauro Pavis, Mima, Ik, Miss Destabilizatia, some Tauis is I informed you politiki, the Sap Christina Shia, and Ems Angres, Ampernebis, Abdul Robasta. We have a book for the Parallel regime, she called a new Musha, the Haligamus Alevit, the Bazin, the Tresor, Hamu, and not 